Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have another example of a JE main question dealing with thermodynamics. And in this case, we're dealing with heat expansion. So let's read the problem. Each side of a box made of sheet metal in cubic shape is A at room temperature. So it's a box, a cubic box, where the side is A in all three dimensions. The, uh, the room temperature is T. The coefficient of linear expansion of the sheet metal is alpha. The sheet metal is heated uniformly by a small temperature delta T so that its new temperature is now T plus delta T. Calculate the increase in the volume of the metal box. So the principle here is volume expansion or volume expansion due to heating. And here we're not dealing with a solid cube, we're dealing with a hollow cube. So the real question is, is the principle the same for a hollow cube as it is for a solid cube? So let's think about that. So let's draw a cube. And if this was a solid cube and the sides have dimensions A, then the way you would find the increase in the volume, delta V, would be equal to the volume coefficient of expansion, which is typically called beta, times the original volume times delta T. So in this case, this would be beta times uh, the volume, which would be A cubed, that's the original volume, times delta T. But we're not dealing with a solid cube, we're dealing with a hollow cube. Oh, by the way, one more thing we should know, we can replace this, typically, if only your linear um, expansion coefficient is given, which like it's here, then we can also write it as 3 times alpha times V initial times delta T, which is equal to uh, 3 alpha times A cubed delta T. And notice, that's one of the answers, would be answer C. But is it also true if you have a hollow cube? So imagine that we begin to hollow out the cube in such a way that every, we, leave, we let everything go except the very small rim in all dimensions. So notice that we just simply hollow it out, like this, and now we just have a very thin sheet metal hollow box Everything else on the inside is gone. Of course, there is a surface here, but there's no volume to it. So all we have now left is the surface, and we don't have any volume to this cube. Would... Solid. Solid? Yeah, right. So now we no longer have solid. Now we have a hollow cube. Oop, hollow. It's going to spell hollow. There we go. So, is the principle the same? But notice, if you were to attach the sheet metal to a solid block of metal and you heat it up, the sides of the metal would expand exactly the same as everything else on the inside. The principle essentially is the same. It doesn't matter if something is hollow or something is solid. Another way of looking at it is let's say you had a flat disk and you make, you make the center of the disk hollow, now you heat it, everything will expand, so the outsides will expand this way, but the hole will expand as well. Any any region, let's say you take an imaginary slice in this direction, how would that slice expand? Well, the slice would expand just like everything else. As it's heating, everything would just kind of go out. It doesn't matter if you talk about the very edge of the rim, a slice in the middle, the inside hole, everything will expand proportionally to the size of that object and the amount of heating that you go through. So it turns out that this delta V also applies to hollow cubes as well as the solid cubes. So since you get the same result, that means that C is the correct answer. And that is how it's done. So all you have to realize, the principle of the change in volume to the heating is equal either to the volume coefficient of expansion times the original volume times delta T or three times the linear coefficient of expansion times the original volume times delta T. And of course, the original volume would be A cubed, and that's how you get that answer. And it's the same for hollow as well as solid cubes. Exactly the same principle. And that is how it's done. Sometimes if you just let your, don't use your brain, and use your feeling, you might think, well, there's stuff inside. Stuff inside to push the stuff outside. There's a lot of confusion. Whenever I present something like this, like let's say you have a, a disc, a thin disc, and you make a hole in the disc, 
And the question is, will the hole expand this way or will the hole expand yeah. this way? And a lot of students will think that the hole would get pushed by the expanding metal. But then the way you think of it is like this. Let's say that you actually have a solid disc all the way through and you just paint a line here. Well, what will happen now is you heat it, everything will expand and the line will go out as well, indicating that that hole would have gotten bigger if you heat it. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but yet yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, but then even with paint alignment, you say, well, there's stuff inside. <laughs> pushing so it. Pushing it. Another way, okay, okay I'll take that. Let, let me put it this way. So let's go here. Now, if you imagine that here is a ring of molecules all the way around, right? Just imagine all the way around. Now you heat it, these molecules will need more space. They'll push against each other, and as they push against each other, they'll have to move backwards because the hole has to go to get bigger for these molecules on the inside to give themselves more room as they're being heated, so it forces things out. So there's different ways of looking at it, but that's the principle behind it. Well, sometimes you just have to say, my intuition is wrong. <laughs> intuition often leads you to the wrong answer. Sometimes, sometimes it, yes. In physics, what I always tell the students is go by what you know. Go by the definition, go by what you know. Not always go by intuition because the intuition will often be wrong in physics. Yeah, yeah it's, that's true. Well, it's an easy problem if you think about it. You could do this in 30 seconds and move on to the next one. They say, uh, that's not what you do in Las Vegas, so. <laughs> you roll the dice. <laughs> uh. Yeah, gambling is not good for me. I always lose. <laughs>